hello guys so welcome again to another after effect tutorials and today i want to show you how you can create this inferno logo animation right inside adobe after effect so support me on this one do not forget to like the video subscribe to the youtube channel then turn on the notification then come back let's get started now in adobe after effect i'm gonna create a new composition i'm gonna name this main or you can name it whatever you like so i'm gonna go with the resolution of 1920 by 1080 30 frames per second and then i'm gonna make the entire animation duration 10 seconds then you hit ok right click on your timeline go to new and then create a new solid layer make sure this is black and then name this bg now ctrl d on your keyboard to duplicate this and then name this fire now it is time to bring in our logo navigate to where you have your logo you can use any logo of your choosing just follow the instruction then drag and drop it into the project manager window then drag and drop it into the timeline right above every other layer you're gonna hit s to scale down if that is too big then i'm gonna hit ctrl shift c to pre-compose this i'm gonna name this logo holder then make sure you move all attributes to the new composition then you hit ok select the fire layer which is the solid layer you added earlier then carry the pen tool and draw a mask like this then whatever your logo is you're gonna add some few mask around the logo we're gonna add an effect called Saba Saba is a free plugin you can just google it on the internet and download it completely free from video co-pilot so add that to your new solid layer so we're gonna make some changes to this right here so we're gonna go into this preset and select the inferno preset let's fit this to composition so that we can see what exactly we are doing so we're gonna expand the custom core right here and set this server to the layer mask that is gonna make this entire thing follow the layer mask so for the color i'm gonna go with is a, a light blue from the logo so I'm gonna settle with this color so what I'm gonna do now is to go to two seconds forward in time and then I'm gonna set a keyframe for the end offset then I'm gonna go back to zero seconds and turn the end offset value to zero so I'm gonna move about one seconds forward in time and also set a keyframe for the start offset then I'm gonna go to three seconds forward in time I make the start offset 100 so i'm going to temporarily hide the logo then hit you on your keyboard to reveal all the keyframes select all the keyframes right here hit f now on your keyboard to ease ease now select the logo holder layer ctrl d on your keyboard to duplicate it we're going to unhide this because we're going to need this right away so we're going to navigate to the project files and we're gonna drag and drop this video asset into the project manager window so i'm gonna drag and drop it right on top of the logo right here so i'm gonna set this to this point where the flame is finishing up so i'm gonna start here beautiful so first of all what i'm gonna do is to set the mode to screen that way we can see everything i'm gonna add the hue and saturation effect we're gonna check this colorize right here that way we can have one color going through this so i'm gonna move this until i have a color that is very close to what i have with the other saber so i'm gonna move this logo right on top of that but first of all i'm gonna hit select this and hit p on my keyboard so that i can reveal the position property i want this very bottom right here to start right at the bottom of the logo so i'm just gonna move it slightly upward like this so i'm gonna select this and set the track mat to alpha mat the logo on top of it and that is gonna give me this 
So I'm just simply going to set the timing. Beautiful. We're going to select the logo holder again. Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate that. And we're going to move that right above the entire layer. So what I'm going to do now is to make sure it's on hidden. Then I can see my logo like this. Then I will pick the rectangle tool and make sure no layer is selected. I will set this to gradient and I'll make sure the stroke is set to none. I'll just simply draw a square right above it like this. So I'm going to move this knob right here to spread this around. Feel free to do what you think is best for you. So you can also go into the gradient right here to set your black and white gradient. This was the one I set previously. It is very easy and self-explanatory. So once you have something like this, so what we're going to do now is to move it right below the logo right here and set the track mat to alpha mat the logo above it. And that is going to give us this beautiful gradient. So we're going to select this shape layer and add CC glass. At this point, we're going to import a grunge image. We will need a grunge image to set the texture of that metallic fill. So drag and drop it right inside your timeline that we import the entire grunge image. So we don't need to see it right away. We can hide that. Then select this, go into the effect right here, expand the surface. And I'm going to make this bump map the grunge image. So we're going to set this smoothness, uh, softness to 8. We're going to set this height to about 70. So if you pull in now, you begin to see the difference, of course. Let me set this to full so that you can see that you begin to see the rough surface I want to see. So we're going to add another effect right here. But before then, I'm going to set the displacement to 60. So now let's add another CC blob lies. Then I'm also going to go into the bulb layers and set the bulb layer to the same grunge map I imported earlier. And I'm going to go into this and set the softness to 5. Then I will set the cutaway to 50. Select the logo holder and the shape layer right here. Ctrl Shift C to pre-compose that. And we're going to name this metal. Then make sure you move all attributes to the new composition, then you hit OK. So we're going to scrub through our timeline now to animate the opacity for this. At this point where the light fire is finishing, hit T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity. Set a keyframe for the opacity and then come back right here and set the opacity value to 0. So we're going to move it to 4 seconds, hit N to set your preview point. So we're going to hit spacebar to preview this and this is going to give us this. We're going to move this slightly backwards so that this burning will finish before the metal shows. Let me expand this last keyframe. I really want it to come in very softly. Beautiful. I just need to extend it until I like what I see. Feel free to experiment. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is to duplicate this logo holder composition. Ctrl D on your keyboard to do that. I'm going to still move it right above everything right here and then unhide it. Then I'm going to add an effect called Vegas. Now expand the image contour. So we're going to set the channel to alpha. That way we have the lines going through all of this. And let me pull in so that you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. Then I will change the resolution temporarily to full. Set the segment to one. Then I'm going to set the color to this blue right here. Then I'm going to come here to the blend mode to over transparent. That way we have this line right here. So I'm going to come right here. 
I'm gonna come to about this point just after four seconds. Then I'm gonna set a keyframe for rotation. Then I'll set a keyframe for the length. Then I'll move right here. This point at this point right here, I'll set the length to zero. And then I'll set the rotation to one. So I'll hit you on the keyboard to reveal all of the keyframe. Then I'll move forward in time to about eight seconds forward in time. Then I'll copy this length keyframe, Control C and Control V to paste it right here. Then I'll move this rotation keyframe to the end right here. Then select all the keyframe, hit F now on your keyboard to easy ease. So now we're gonna select this logo holder composition, then move it right above everything in the hierarchy, then unhide it. So I'm gonna set a keyframe for the opacity, but first of all, I'm gonna drop this to 78. I'm gonna drop this opacity to 78. That is what works for me. You can find a number that works. I don't want it to be fully visible. Then I will come right here, just about this point and set a keyframe for that. Then I'll come to this point right here and set the opacity value to zero. I can stretch that far away. Then I'll come here and set the opacity value back to zero. So I'll select this metal, this metal layer right here. Yes, that one. Then I'll move to this point right here to nine. Then hit T on the keyboard to reveal its own opacity. Then I'm gonna copy this last keyframe right here. Control C, Control V to paste it at this point. Then I'll move to 10 seconds forward in time and make the opacity value to zero. That way we have everything coming up and then disappearing back again. So I'm gonna fit this back to screen so that I can see what I have done so far. I'm gonna go right click on the timeline, go to new and create a new null object. Select all the layers except the BG, then make it a child of this new null object. Then hit S on your keyboard, then go to this point right here where the entire thing is beginning to show. Then set a keyframe for the scale and then go right to the end of the composition and set the scale value to 150. So we're gonna select this from this meta right here. Right click on your timeline, go to new. We're gonna add a new adjustment layer. Let's move to this point where we can see this entire thing. Then I'm gonna add a curve effect to this adjustment layer. Then I'm gonna switch this to the blue. I'm gonna pop that up. Then I'm, I'm gonna switch that to red again. Then I'm gonna pull that down on the graph. Then another thing I'm gonna do to increase the metallic color right here, I'm gonna select this metal layer. I'm gonna select this metal layer. Then I'm gonna add the tint effect. Then I'll move my time indicator to where I can see the color of this lighting. Then I'll change this white to this blue right here. Feel free to adjust that to whatever you like. I think this is too dark, so I'm gonna pull that up a bit. Beautiful. So you can see, generally, I have a beautiful hue right here. So let's preview the entire animation and let's see what we have done. And if you preview the entire animation, this is what you have. A unique slick Inferno logo animation right inside Adobe After Effects. If you learned something new on this video, please hit the like button. 
that will enable the algorithm to suggest this to more people if you have any question please feel free to ask me in the comment section and i'll reply to all questions as quick as i can if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe to my youtube channel you can support me in any way you can give me super thanks subscribe to my membership whatever way you want to support me with even if you share the video that is also a huge support and it is highly appreciated if you like the video leave me a comment is all the support so in whatever way you are able to support me i highly appreciate you so until i see you again on the next one my name is ssb otaru for motion Gate studios